Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. In this video, we'll take a look at some of the basic Kubernetes interview questions and their answers. So Kubernetes is a very vast topic. I made a lot of videos on Kubernetes on my channel. So firstly, I'll recommend you to go and watch those videos so that you get a context of what is a pod, what is deployment, service, ingress. We also did a video on the advanced deployment strategies. We did a lot of videos on Kubernetes. I'll try to put all of them in the description. Please go and watch those videos so that you get a very clear idea on the components of Kubernetes and a lot of other things that I've discussed on Kubernetes. So this is part one series of uh, interview questions. We will do more videos on Kubernetes interview questions because it would take a lot of time if we do all of them together. So let's quickly jump and see what we have for today. So these are the basic questions and uh, these are the most commonly asked questions in interviews. You should definitely have an idea and uh, the answers to these questions should be on tip of your tongue because uh, if you try to uh, fumble on these questions, it might, uh, I mean, interviewer, interviewer might feel that uh, you do not have proper experience on Kubernetes. So even though you know the answers to these questions, just try to uh, revise it one more time so that you will be able to answer these questions during interview promptly. Okay, so question number one that we have today is what is the difference between Docker and Kubernetes, right? Both of them are very uh, popular technologies in DevOps. So basically Docker is for building and running single container, whereas Kubernetes is a system. So you can consider Kubernetes as a group of virtual machines that are combined together to form a cluster. So uh, that's the main difference between Docker and Kubernetes. So one is a container platform and the other is container orchestration platform. So question number two, what are the main components of Kubernetes architecture? Okay, so this will tell the interviewer that do you have the knowledge of Kubernetes or not? Because there are a lot of components in Kubernetes and these are the components that interact with each other to actually form your whole communication between the containers. So in Kubernetes, you have two major things. One is the control plane or the master and the other one is the node. So there are components which run on the control plane and there are components which run on the node. So firstly, the components that run on the control plane are Kube API server, which is responsible for your API. I mean, it's a API server. So that itself tells what it does. It is responsible for everything. Uh, the actions that uh, you perform using kubectl or, you know, the communications that happen, everything goes to the Kube API server first. <laughs> and then you have etcd, which is the Kubernetes, uh, I mean, where Kubernetes stores its objects. And then you have Kube scheduler, which it takes care of the scheduling of pods on Kubernetes. And then you have controller manager, so controller manager is responsible for the controllers in Kubernetes. And then you have the cloud controller manager. So these are the con uh, components that run on the control plane. And after that, you have components that run on the node. So these are your kubelet, which is res responsible for uh, running containers in a pod. And then you have kube proxy, which I'll tell you going ahead. And then you have container runtime. Container runtime, uh, like, you know, uh, Kubernetes has uh, supports multiple container runtimes like Docker, Container D, or Creo. So there are different container runtimes which are responsible for running the containers again. Okay, question number three. What are the main differences between Docker Swam and Kubernetes? Okay, so Again, both of them are container orchestration uh, environments. Both of them uh, are designed to solve the same purpose. One is designed by Docker and the other one is by uh, Google, which is Kubernetes, right? So what basically, uh, I mean, in which aspect basically they differ is uh, if you consider Kubernetes, right? It, ha it has advantage over Docker Swam, like, you know, the scalability of the Kubernetes, or you can configure a lot of monitoring with Kubernetes. And uh, Kubernetes has something like custom resource definitions with which you can do load balancing, advanced load balancing with uh, uh, with the applications that you have deployed in Kubernetes. Uh, Kubernetes also has uh, support for integrating with uh, like the API gateways and you can integrate security, web application firewall. So Kubernetes is overall, you know, uh, a complete production grade uh, system. I don't say Docker Swam is not, but Kubernetes is even backed up by a great community. Uh, CNCF is there uh, and a lot of other companies are uh, contributing to Kubernetes, so which makes Kubernetes a, overall a better system than Docker Swam. Question number four, what is the difference between Docker container and a Kubernetes pod. Okay, so this is one of the basic questions that interviewer will ask you to understand if you have knowledge on Kubernetes or you're still working on Docker. So the basic difference is that 
doc, uh, Kubernetes pod is a group of like, you know, you can call it as one or a group of containers. Okay. It doesn't have to be group of containers all the time. It can be a one single container or group of containers. And the basic advantage is that all the containers that are deployed in a pod, they can have the shared storage. They can also, you know, uh, share the network resources. And it also has a specifications of how these containers have to be run. Like, for example, if you're running a Docker container, you pass a lot of parameters, like what port it has to uh, bind to the host and uh, what is the volume that it has to use, uh, other things, right? So the same way you put these things in the Kubernetes pod specification, which is a YAML file. So that's the basic difference between a container and a Kubernetes pod. Question number five. What is the difference between Kubernetes deployment, stateful set, and the daemon set? Okay. So the, these are the three different types of uh, deployments that you can do in Kubernetes, uh, either through a deployment, stateful set, or the daemon set. So stateful set is uh, something which you use for maintaining uh, stateful applications. Like, you know, if your application has to maintain a state, uh, if your application is going down and the next time it has to come up, it has to come up with the same data or, you know, uh, it has to use a specific volume uh, that's persistent volume. So in such cases, you use a stateful set and then daemon set is basically a controller, okay, which typically runs on all the nodes of your Kubernetes cluster. So if you want your, uh, let's assume you have a Kubernetes deployment and you say replicas as five. So you are not sure where these replicas will fall. It depends on the Kubernetes or if you have configured any rules. But by default, it will go uh, according to the cube scheduler wherever or wherever it has to deploy the pods. Everything can go to a same node or two different nodes. But whereas the daemon set, the pods are deployed on each and every node of your Kubernetes cluster. Let's say you want an application that has to monitor the nodes of your Kubernetes cluster, or it has to check health of each and every node. Your application is uh, performing that thing. So in such case, you need to have a daemon set. Uh, if you are aware of Linux, there are a lot of daemons uh, that are running on your Linux. So daemon set applications are also similar. Then, uh, what is a namespace in Kubernetes? Okay, so namespace in Kubernetes is basically a logical grouping of networking resources. Let's assume uh, you have a lot of teams in your organization and all of you wants to use a Kubernetes cluster. So each of your project gets a namespace. You can consider it, it is used to achieve multi-tenancy or you, you can consider it is used to uh, achieve multiple teams working in the same Kubernetes cluster. So each of them can be given a Kubernetes namespace or you have a dev namespace, you have staging namespace, and you have production namespace for logical isolation of your resources. Question number seven, what is the role of kube proxy? Okay, so kube proxy basically takes care of uh, networking in your Kubernetes. Let's assume that uh, you want to, uh, how do I put this? So you want to talk to an application that is deployed in Kubernetes. Kubeproxy is the one that basically takes care of this thing. So it has, it can be configured in multiple ways. The most common thing is IP tables. So in Kubernetes, whenever you deploy a container or whenever you deploy a pod, whatever it is, so IP tables gets updated and Kubeproxy basically takes care of updating these IP tables. And whenever someone tries to access your pod from external or within the cluster, they refer to the IP tables, the rules that are written in the in the IP tables, and they take care of the communication. So kube proxy is the one basically that is a key component for handling the communication in Kubernetes. Question number eight. What are the different types of services within Kubernetes? So in a Kubernetes, a service can be implemented in multiple ways. So the commonly used services in Kubernetes are cluster IP mode, you have node port mode and you have the load balancer type mode. So these are the most three commonly used services types in Kubernetes. And followed up by what are the differences between node port and the load balancer service type. So node port service type, whenever you're deploying a pod and you are creating a service for it, or you're deploying a deployment and you're creating a service for it. So what happens is if you create this service as node port service type, your application can be accessed using using the node IP and the port that is allocated by your Kubernetes. So your node, let's assume your node IP is 172.16.3.4. Kubernetes associates, I mean, the service gets associated with the node port. So it would be 172.16.3.4 colon, let's say 8000 colon, I mean, 
obviously node port should be in the range of 32000 so it should be uh, 172.16.3.4 colon 32174 something like that so this would be your node port type service so what is the advantage with it the advantage is that you are able to access it with using the node ip address so whoever can access this node can be able to access the application they don't have to have access to the internals of your kubernetes cluster or that application doesn't have to sit inside your kubernetes cluster even the application that is outside your cluster and has access to your node ip can access the application then what if someone external to your uh, company or someone external to your firewall wants to access this specific thing. I mean, they don't have access to your node or they don't have access to your uh, Kubernetes cluster, but they still want to access your application. That, that would be any external websites, right? So you're trying to access many websites every day. And uh, what you are typically doing is you are trying to access them using a external IP address. So for that, you create a service of type load balancer service. So if you're creating a load balancer service, there should be an underlying, this has to be only deployed on a cloud platform. Or if you're doing it on on-premise, you have to use Metal LB, but let's restrict, it to, let's restrict to cloud provider. If you're deploying it on AWS, what happens is that the AWS cloud load balancer service implementation uh, would create a load balancer IP address or a static IP address for you. And this static IP address can be used to talk to the application that you are deployed in Kubernetes. So it only has to be deployed on cloud platform or if you are deploying it on on-premise, you have to definitely install Metal LB. It's a uh, project that is being developed. It's not completely, I cannot say that uh, the project is completely uh, ready for production use case, but you can still go and search for Metal LB. That's for on-premise clusters. Question number 10, what is ingress in Kubernetes? Okay, so ingress is also used to achieve the same purpose that load balancer service is doing, but ingress is a uh, resource that has a lot of other advantages. Like it can define, you can define the traffic rules for your uh, Kubernetes cluster or your Kubernetes application. Let's say you have a domain called example.com and uh, your example.com has to be only accessed by a certain uh, IP, IP address range or your uh, you want to define rules for your applications. Let's say uh, if the request is coming to slash foo, it has to go to login application. If, if the request is going to slash bar, then it has to go to uh, logout application. So ingress is basically used to define rules, traffic rules for your uh, application. So there is a lot that you can do with ingress. And if you just create an ingress, it wouldn't work because you also have to create an ingress controller. So I made a complete video on ingress, ingress controllers, how they work, uh, and how you can create a lot of deployment strategies using ingress. So please watch that video. So I'll put it in the description. So the last question that we have uh, for this basic interview questions is, what is the role of Kubelet? Okay, so Kubelet is basically responsible for running containers in your pod. So what Kubelet does is whenever you create a, a pod in Kubernetes, so Kubelet basically talks to the container runtime. There, there can be different container runtimes like container D or Docker or any container runtime. And Kubelet talks to this container runtime and make sure that your container is running on the uh, defined pod or your container is running on your Kubernetes cluster. So this is a responsible for Kubelet. In short, you can say Kubelet is responsible for running pods or running containers in the pod. So this, this is the basic interview questions. And if you have any, any questions, please post in the comments. I'll uh, make a detailed video on if your question cannot be addressed in a comment. So that's all we have for today, guys. Thank you so much.